Since you've learned a little about how the atom is made of protons, electrons and neutrons, we can go a little deeper into the mass of these building blocks and how you can tell from the periodic table. Because this video is all about atomic number, mass number and atomic mass. And we'll start directly with atomic number. It is like this, that every element has its own number, an atomic number. Which element a certain atom is, is decided by one thing only, the number of protons in its nucleus. Now, the atom number, it's as simple as this. It's equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. Let's make a small table just to reinforce how atomic number and number of protons are connected. In the table head, we write element, atomic number, and number of protons. And the first element we look at is hydrogen. To find out what's the atomic number for hydrogen, we better check the periodic table. We find hydrogen up here to the left, but it's a little bit hard to see, so let's enlarge this a little bit. In this periodic table, the atomic number is up here to the left. We can see that the atomic number for hydrogen is 1, which we fill in in our table over here. Then we have the number of protons, and it is, as I said, equal to the atomic number. That's why we immediately know that there is one proton in a hydrogen atom. Here's another example, helium. Once again, we check our periodic table and we see that helium is up here to the right. If we enlarge it a little bit, we can directly see that the atomic number for helium is 2. So that is what we write in our table too. How many protons are there then in a helium atom? That's right, the number of protons is equal to the atomic number, 2. Do you think you get it? Let's take another example just to be sure. Carbon. What's the atomic number for carbon? Let's check the periodic table again. This is where we find carbon, and if we zoom in, we can see that the atomic number for carbon is 6. We turn back to our table and fill in the atomic number here. And now about those protons. How many are they? Well, 6, of course. Just one last example before moving on. Chlorine this time. We have chlorine over here in the periodic table, and we promptly find the atomic number 17 here. In our table, we write that the atomic number is 17, and then we automatically know that the number of protons is 17. So you get it by now? The number of protons is equal to the atomic number. Good. Now, from the atomic number, we move on to the mass number. It is like this, that every atom, except for hydrogen, also contains neutrons. The mass number tells us how many protons and neutrons there are together. Sometimes it's written like this, that A equals Z plus N, where A is the mass number, Z is the number of protons and N is the number of neutrons. Before we move on, you need to be familiar with these definitions too. First of all, a nuclide is an atomic species with a certain number of protons and neutrons. Isotopes, then, are different nuclides of the same element, that is, atomic species with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. To sort out those concepts, we start by looking at the simplest nuclide in the whole universe. It is a hydrogen atom with the atomic number 1 and the mass number 1. The chemical symbol for hydrogen is H, and we write the mass number superscripted to the left of the symbol. The atomic number is written subscripted to the left of the symbol. How many protons and neutrons are there in this nuclide? Well, to show it, we'll make a big, wonderful table. And yes, write this down, you too. In the head, we write isotope, nuclide, atomic number, number of protons and neutrons, and then finally, the mass number. So, let's start with hydrogen, which we write like this. Hydrogen has the atomic number 1, which we write here, and thus also 1 proton, which we write here. We see the mass number here, and it is 1. This means that there are no neutrons at all in this nuclide, and so we get the mass number, the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Next isotope in our table is deuterium. It is this flavor of hydrogen which we write here. As you can see, it still has the atomic number 1, and thus only one proton in its nucleus. But since the mass number is 2, the nucleus also contains a neutron, which we write here. And 1 
plus 1 equals 2. And that's why the mass number for deuterium is 2. There is a third hydrogen isotope called tritium. Its mass number is 3, which you can see here. But first, we fill in that the atomic number still is 1. And the number of protons also is 1. The mass number was 3, which means that in tritium there are 2 neutrons. And we see that 1 plus 2 equals 3, which is the mass number that we write here. The next atom in the periodic table is helium, and we'll specifically look at this nuclide. The atomic number is 2, so let's write this here. And then of course we also know that the number of protons is also 2. The mass number is 4, and then we know that since we already have 2 protons, the number of neutrons must be 4 minus 2 equals 2. And yes, as we said before, the mass number is then 4. Now let's look at a somewhat bigger isotope. We turn our attention to carbon-12, which we write like this. The atomic number? Yes, it is 6, which we write here. This means that there are also 6 protons in the nucleus. But what is the number of neutrons? The math is still pretty simple here. The mass number is 12, which means that the number of neutrons is 12 minus 6, which is equal to 6 neutrons. And to be sure, we check that 6 plus 6 equals 12, the mass number that we write here. Another carbon isotope is carbon-13. The only thing that differs from carbon-12 is, as you can see here, the mass number. The atomic number is 6, as well as the number of protons. But since the mass number is 13, the number of neutrons is instead 13 minus 6 equals 7. And we check this too, yes, 6 plus 7 equals 13, the mass number, which we write here. There is yet another carbon isotope, and it is carbon-14. Guess its atom number? That's right, it is 6, just like the number of protons in its nucleus. The number of neutrons is 8, which we know because 6 plus 8 equals 14, which is the mass number. Don't surrender just yet, we still have a couple of examples left. This time, we look at an isotope called chlorine-35. As you might guess, its mass number is 35, but since I peeked at my periodic table previously, I also know that its atomic number is 17. This also means that the number of protons is 17. But how about the number of neutrons? Alright, we know that the mass number is 35, and since the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, the number of neutrons must be 35 minus 17 equals 18. Because, well, 17 plus 18 equals 35. Check it on your calculator if you don't believe me. Now, finally, we'll look at the isotope chlorine-37, which we write like this. The atomic number, still 17, just like the number of protons. But then we have the number of neutrons. It is 20, because 17 plus 20 equals 37, which is the mass number. In the last part of this video, we'll look at the atomic mass, that is, how much a single atom weighs. If we look at a single carbon-12 atom, its mass is 1.994 times 10 to the minus 23 grams, a terribly cumbersome figure. To make it easier to calculate the masses of atoms and molecules, chemists and physicists have devised a completely original mass unit, the unified mass unit U. Sometimes it is written AMU for atomic mass unit, but I think it's more convenient to just write it U. Also, for some reason physicists seem to prefer the unit U, while protein chemists or biochemists prefer the unit DA for Dalton, but they are exactly the same thing. Anyway, this is what's been decided. The atomic mass unit has been defined in this way that a carbon-12 atom weighs exactly 12U. One may write it in this way a little bit more mathematical. The triple equal sign can be used when it's about a definition and that the mass is exactly 12U, not 12.0 or 12.00U, but exactly 12U. So, one atomic mass unit is exactly one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Now we can look at what the building blocks of an atom weigh. A proton and a neutron weigh approximately the same. 
Since a carbon-12 atom weighs exactly 12U, a proton weighs approximately 1U, and that's what a neutron weighs too. An electron, however, weighs much less, about 1 1800th of U. Actually, the electron's mass is so small it is usually never considered when you calculate the mass of an atom. But what does it say in the periodic table? If we look at chlorine here, we can see that its atomic number is 17. But what's written here, below, is not the mass number, but the atomic mass. So how come the atomic mass for chlorine is 35.45U? Well, this is because the atomic mass indicated in the periodic table is the average mass of a chlorine atom. You have already learned that there are two chlorine isotopes, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. They don't weigh the same, and that's why the average atomic mass of chlorine is somewhere between 35 and 37U. Let's look closer at the atomic mass of chlorine. Its atomic mass is 35.453U, which is approximately 35.5U. This is because of the two chlorine isotopes, chlorine-35, about 75% of all chlorine atoms, and chlorine-37, about 27% of all chlorine atoms. This leads to this, that the average atomic mass for a chlorine atom is 0.75 times 35U plus 0.25 times 37U, which is equal to 35.5U. So, with this, I hope you've understood that the atomic number is the same as the number of protons in the nucleus, and that the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus. And finally, that the atomic mass is the average mass of the atoms of a certain element written with the unit U. Or Dalton, if you're a biochemist.